Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we are going to talk about why this is one of the best possible weeks for you to farm out some materials, weapons, and exotic armor that you may be looking for. This week's Nightfall is Lake of Shadows, which is widely considered one of the fastest and easiest Nightfalls to grind for endgame loot. I'm going to go over some mods, weapons, classes, and other assorted tips in order to make this Nightfall as simple as possible for you to complete. Whether you're an endgame veteran or wanting to just jump into your first ever Nightfall, this guide is for you. For completing the Nightfall, you will get a number of rewards based on what version you do it on. If you're 1345 power or higher, I would recommend doing it on Grandmaster difficulty, as this is going to give you the best rewards. The strategies I go over will be based around GM difficulty, or Grandmaster difficulty, but will also be extremely helpful on the lower Nightfall tiers as well. The various difficulty levels can give high stat armor exotics, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards, and this week's nightfall weapons, which are the hung jury scout rifle and the hothead rocket launcher for the week of November 23rd. However, as an added benefit to the Grandmaster version, you are guaranteed both an ascendant shard as well as an adept version, which is basically just a slightly stronger version of one of the two nightfall weapons on every single run you do if you get the Platinum Medal for killing all champions. Now that we know all about the rewards we can get, let's talk about how to complete the Nightfall itself. For weapons, I recommend running a bow, fusion rifle, and a sword. There's definitely a number of different loadouts that can work and work very well, but I found that swords are the most simple boss bake option that doesn't require any exotics, while sticking with bow overload keeps things smoother and just straight up easier overall. I do run Vex as my fusion rifle of choice and recommend doing so if you have it, but any fusion rifle or even pulse rifle can work here. Basically, you just want to be able to cover both the overload and unstoppable champions that will appear in the strike. Also note that there are mostly solar shields, with a sprinkled in arc and void shield as well, so just be sure that your team has the ability to break solar shields easily as there will be a number of them throughout the strike. Again, Vex works great for that, but something like Tiku's Divination or Iota Draconis could work great as well. For mods, the combination of taking charge and protective light is outstanding as always. Survival is paramount in all endgame content, and even with this being a shorter and easier strike, it's still not an exception. If you're running Vex, Quick Charge is another high priority mod, as well as Particle Deconstruction in your class item slot. If you aren't running Vex and are running a sword, make sure to throw on Passive Guard for even more survival potential. Outside of that, ammo finders for your heavy, and special if you're using one, weapons of choice as well as matching scavenger mods are very useful. And make sure to have at least one concussive dampener on your chest piece, because again that will add to your survival against the onslaught of AoE damage effects. And of course, don't forget your champion mods on your gloves. I would also highly, highly recommend one player on either Well of Radiance Warlock or Bubble Titan, preferably with Helm of Saint-14, for a super safe boss bake. Getting into the strike itself, when you first enter the Mavic Square, look down to the left and focus down the Taken Centurions. They will have arc shields and throw Taken darts at you until they are defeated, which can easily destroy you if not dealt with quickly. From there, just take on any small adds and focus on the champions last. For the Blights, there's a strategy where you can go to the final Blight and break all of them in reverse order to be able to skip many of the adds and champions in this next part. I haven't done that strategy myself, but it could save a few minutes if you're so inclined. If not, just break the first Blight and get ready to focus down the few snipers and the overload that will spawn around the first corner. Once you get to the second corner, two unstoppables will start to push you. Make sure to focus these down and back up as far as needed. You'll have a lot of space to back up and work with if needed. Also look out for the sniper on the right side if you haven't taken it down yet, focusing down the remaining smaller adds and then break the second blight. There will be an overload straight across from the second blight, so make sure to take it down. From there, there'll be a couple solar shielded captains and unstoppables before you can break the third blight, but nothing too crazy if you just chill back and take them as they come. Again, if you ever need to back up, you've got the entire play space to do so. After breaking the final blight, there will be two more overloads, as well as an arc shielded mini boss to take down on the far side near the entrance to the next area, so use your range to take them down and continue to move on. 
The next area on the way to the bridge doesn't really have anything special, so take out all the enemies until you come to the bridge area itself. You'll have two unstoppables to take on right away, and you can try to bait them inside so that nothing else will shoot at you, and you can even try to bait one at a time to make this even easier. Once out on the bridge, take down any enemies you see from a distance, and move up to the top bridge area to take on the first overload. You can then move up to the next part of the upper bridge to take on a second overload, as well as a knight miniboss in the very back. Finally, you'll move over to the left side to take on one final overload and unstoppable to finish the bridge section. Taking out the mini-boss knight and overload first, before taking on the paired overload and unstoppable, will make this section significantly easier. I promise. Once back inside, there will be an unstoppable to deal with right away. Once again, you can pull it back towards you to deal with by itself if needed, but honestly, you can probably just burn it down pretty easily. The next part can be extremely tricky though, if not careful, with multiple solar shielded knights and an overload to take care of. Try to take down the knights first, while staying away from line of sight of the overload. These knights can throw out tons of fire, and can take you out very quickly if you aren't expecting them, so focus in, use supers if you need to, communicate between your teammates, and take them down. Once you get the overload down, there will be one final solar shielded knight at the very top, and you will be at the wizard room. Here, just take on the few weak enemies on the left side of the room, and then put your focus on the wizard. Do be aware of the boop walls, though, as these can easily physics you to a place you either don't want to be, or even just straight up kill you through sheer power of being thrown into a wall. From here to the boss room, it's a pretty smooth ride. Just note that there is a sneaky overload on the left side right in the room right before the boss, and that right before the boss in that little hallway, there's going to be two more overloads. So take them down and jump into the boss room. The boss room itself is going to be a straight boss bake, as I briefly mentioned earlier. Take out the few adds when you first come into the room, break the blight, and immediately well or bubble by the boss. Go to town with your swords, or boss bake option of choice, until the boss is defeated. Don't forget to throw on a tether for a debuff, or offensive supers to get the boss down ASAP. Just use everything you got here, there's nothing left afterwards, throw it all at the boss. And enjoy your loots. I hope this video helped you to get some materials, exotics, and other endgame things that you need this week. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.